Hello, I'm Jonathan and I'm a software engineer at Thinksa. I'm here to explain a bit about what we do and the projects we work on. Let's look at one particularly useful feature, the ability to automatically create PowerPoint slides using JSON. The first thing you need is an existing PowerPoint presentation that contains at least one chart. This will serve as a template for the new presentation. To fill the chart with your custom data, you need a JSON file. We combine the template and the JSON file to create a new presentation. In the JSON file, you specify the path to the template presentation and the new data for the chart. To implement this feature, we need a JSON parser. Most existing JSON parsers use either a DOM, which is slow due to memory allocation and copies, or ZAX event handlers, which are awkward to use. At Thinkser, we have a passion for detail. We wanted the JSON parsing code to be really fast, as well as pretty to look at. So we wrote our own JSON parser. It fully validates the JSON and requires O1 memory. It's faster than a DOM parser because it allows us to store the data directly in our data structures without copies. It's more elegant than a ZAX parser because it uses a convenient pull interface instead of awkward event handlers. For example, the JSON above should be passed into a data structure that looks like this. To pass the JSON, we construct a tcjson parser object. As a pull parser, it is inert and doesn't do anything until we ask it to get some data. For example, to pass a string, we call .expectString in a position where we expect a string value. This function will consume the string in the JSON output. It returns a range that lazily decodes the escape sequences. We can then use tccontosign to store the string. Likewise, .expectNumber parses a number and .expectBool parses a boolean value. To parse an object, we specify a lambda that parses a member value. We then combine it with the name of the corresponding key in a call to .expectObject. The implementation loops over all the keys and invokes the corresponding callbacks, skips members that did not match any of the keys, and reports an error if a required key was not present. When we're done, we call .expectEnd to verify that we've passed the entire JSON. The resulting interface is very convenient to use and heavily optimized. For example, we use SIMD to pass strings. Because the parser is a first-class object that must be actively called to get more values, it's possible to write higher-level pass algorithms on top. For example, we can write a function that lazily passes an array of JSON values or creates a std tuple. If you like what you saw and share our passion for detail, apply today and come work with us.